everybody, and welcome to the Barcoding Huddle. My name is Jody Costa. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Barcoding Incorporated, and I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Barcoding is a supply chain automation and innovation company dedicated to helping organizations like yours become more efficient, accurate, and connected. Today, we're joined by a very special partner, DataLogic, a global technology leader in automatic data capture and factory automation, and one of our core partners, uh, for a very special huddle on fuel for the future, celebration of the barcode. Um, so special thanks to DataLogic for sponsoring this conversation, which I know you're going to want to stick around in here because it's a really good one. So at this moment, I'd like to go ahead and invite my guests to, to join me on camera and to take yourselves off mute. And we'll start to, you know, start the celebration really uh, for the barcode and, and for the partnership between barcoding and DataLogic. So um, welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for being here today. And one of the best ways for us to get started is with some introductions. That way our audience knows who's on the phone with me today and, and who's going to be giving them all the good insights. Um, so I'm gonna start uh, actually with my DataLogic friends here. And Mike uh, Spitzel, I'd like you to start with a quick introduction. All right, well, I'm really happy to be here and participate, super excited. Um, I'm Mike Svital. I've been with DataLogic for 35 years. Started in the engineering, mechanical engineering, optical design, um, and then you know moved through project management. Now I spent about 15 years in product management, primarily with PNL uh, logistics uh, and manufacturing applications. So um, I'm super happy to be here and excited for the discussion. Awesome. Well, I know that you're going to bring a wealth of experience to the table. So thank you, Mike. Thank you. Alfredo, how about you? Give us yeah, your- Yeah, thank you, Jody. Your... Um, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Alfredo Machado. I'm a channel account manager with DataLogic. I'm based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I have not been with the company over 35 years like Mike here. I've been here for four and a half years. Um, overall, a little bit uh, above uh, six years of experience in the industry. My first uh, three years, I was a distribution manager for Latin America and Mexico, and now a channel manager here in the, in the U.S. So working closely with uh, partners such as uh, Barcoding and uh, looking forward to this conversation, celebrating uh, National Barcode Day and actually the 50th uh, anniversary of DataLogic as well. So very happy about that. Yes, congrats to DataLogic, 50 year anniversary is awesome. Uh, and today I actually invited a special guest. So Shane Snyder, our president of Barcoding, would you uh, give a brief introduction, please? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just like the, the first two fellows, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me this afternoon. Um, I'm the president of Barcoding Incorporated, and uh, I've only been here for 12 years. And I just, Mike, I did some quick math there, right? And so you've been with Data Logic a little over 72% of their life. So uh, <laughs> congratulations. And uh, Here's wishing you another 36 years. Uh, well, <laughs> I hope I'm pitching by then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you for being here, Shane. We always appreciate sure. your perspective. So, all right, we're talking fuel for the future. We're talking about barcodes. Well, one of the things that you heard Alfredo drop was that there's actually a national day now to celebrate the barcode and its significance to the world. Um, national Barcode Day is on June 26th annually, and it celebrates the first successful commercial scan of a barcode. Um, the retail grocery industry had been in a lot of pain back in 1974, well, obviously leading up to that. And on June 26, 1974, that first scan of a barcode really revolutionized um, supply chain processes, retail processes, et cetera. Um, I think the barcode today uh, is more ubiquitous than ever. I, I can't imagine life really without it. And so I just thought it'd be fun to maybe open up with, um, you know, what National Barcode Day has meant to, meant to you guys. And I should say that this was the brainchild of Barcoding Inc. and Data Logic yeah. and our distributor partner, ScanSource. So we are extra excited about it. <laughs> um, but Shane, I, I thought I'd give you the honors of kicking this off about, you know, what, what has National Barcode Day kind of, what does that mean to you? Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Sometimes the, the seemingly the simplest things in life are the most important things in life. And, um, uh, you know, I'm older than 1974, but uh, 
you know, the barcode's been around for a long period of time. And a lot of times we take those things for granted uh, as we go to a grocery store, as we have somebody deliver a package to our, our home or our business. Um, but what an amazing impact the, that seemingly simple technology in terms of uh, the, at least the initial barcode uh, has had on the world, right? Oh, don't try to hesitate to overstate it, but you know, I think in today's world, the, like we probably wouldn't be able to eat without <laughs> barcodes, right? I mean, there's no way to distribute product, and uh, you know, it's a really vital piece of of technology that underlies a lot of the other business initiatives and business processes that are out there, right? So it. Uh, uh, it's an old school saying, but garbage in, garbage out, right? If we're not capturing data correctly on the very front end of every business uh, transaction or workflow, um, you know, the rest of it becomes a little bit meaningless out there. So it's really impactful. And, you know, as we come out, you know, I am getting somewhat weary of speaking of pandemics and all those things, right? But um, you know, pre-pandemic world, you think of 2019 and before it, you know, we really looked at the barcode as being a set of technologies that really helped organizations to become more efficient and more accurate in the things that they did. Um, you know, kind of post-pandemic, a lot of changes in the dynamics of the, of the economy and, and uh, globally, certainly here in the U.S. as well as Canada, uh, you know, we've experienced... Uh, kind of a labor crisis out there, right? And so I think having technology like a bar, you know, again, you know, it's a ubiquitous technology um, underlying the, these, these work streams that we're doing out there, it, it drives more efficiency so that we can get more out of, or more productivity out of the limited labor resources that we do have uh, and drive more productivity through that. So, um, you know, it's been an amazing transition from a pack of gum to literally everything in the world is, you know, seemingly barcoded out there, right? There's, there's not many, I look at my, at my desk and I've got a book <laughs> and it's got a barcode on it, right? I've got oh, a yeah, bottle of water, are. it's got a barcode on it, right? Everywhere. Everything's got a barcode on it. And, um, you know, it's the fundamental, it's the, kind of the foundation of so many uh, technology advancements and business improvements that have taken place over the last 50 plus years. So, um, you know, I think we like see, a, we see a, a big <laughs> revolution going on. So, it, you know, safe to say over your 12 years, you've become a barcoding fan. I've become a barcoding fan. <laughs> Excellent. Right? Excellent. It's well, on my I, card, I have to say so, but I, <laughs> yeah. actually, I actually mean it. <laughs> well, Mike, I know with your experience, I mean, Shane did, you know, touched on a lot of things that we're going to dive into during this conversation. But, you know, for you who've spent, a, 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 have had a tremendous career in the AIDC space, you know, when I say National Barcode Day, kind of does that, how does that make you feel? Well, besides providing an awesome career for me, um, I had a couple anecdotes, like um, when my, when my son was, I think he was 10. And we were talking about what I do at work. And I had just uh, done an invention for one of a, a tabletop reader that really went into like um, gas stations where you, it was the first kind of what we call mini scanner. And my son said, uh, dad, I wanna, I wanna do a job like you where what you do, everyone in the world is impacted by it. And I didn't really think about that, you know, because you kind of get tunnel vision. Oh, I'm making a yeah. grocery store or working on a scan, hand scanner. But you yeah. start thinking about it, like how it impacts distributing medicine in a third world country, tracking it. Um, and then later with my son, he was older and he was playing soccer and he really hurt his knee. So we're in the hospital. And first thing they do is put a, a band on with a barcode. Yeah. And the nurses come in. They're scanning the medicine, they're scanning it. And it was a data logic hand scanner that I had worked on. Wow. And it was, yeah, it was like, and of course I'm talking to my son and he's like, why are they scanning everything? And I go, well, this is to make sure you get the right medicine. Yeah. And uh, so when I think of the national barcode day, I think of 
how it's changed lives, how it's impacted the world, you know. I mean, we think about it as making things more efficient, you know, saving companies money. But, you know, when, when they go to recall some product, you know, whether it's, you know, a spoiled meat or whatever it is, the way we're able to put more data into the 2D labels or serialize with serialized barcodes, that has a big impact. Because now I can say, hey, where was this meat packaged? Uh, what date? How far it goes back? Where did it flow? Um, so that, that's really what it means to me is more about how people's lives have been impacted by it. Oh, I love that. And what a moment to have your <laughs> yeah. actual product right there. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. Awesome. it's crazy. Um, Thea, thank you for sharing. And I know Alfredo, you, you don't have as lengthy a career, but I know that you you helped spearhead this national day with me. And I know this has special meaning for you too. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think I was, I was very excited when the, you know, you brought this last year. I think it was a very creative uh, way of celebrating the industry. And I think, you know, for me, it's uh, obviously special for us that we do this and we're in this market. Um, you know, the, the, the evolution of the barcode and looking at history, you know, how far it has come and, you know, to Mike's point, it impacts us on the most simple things in life. It's just that probably we're not aware of this um, as much as, as we, we, we should in a sense, right? I remember when I first started in the industry six years ago, um, the day, my first day, my, my first job in the industry, I started looking at barcodes in the different way and products and everywhere I would go, yeah. I would look at the brand of the scanner and the printer and all these applications. So I think, you know, it's interesting how it continues to evolve uh, to help everyone be more efficient in life. You know, businesses, um, even for you as a consumer, it helps a lot. You know, now you, I think everybody knows what a QR code is, right? Before, yeah. you know, nobody was aware of the symbologies or what type of barcode was, you know, how was it used, et cetera. I think nowadays it's kind of in front of our eyes as we do anything in life. So uh, to me, it's a special, and I think it's special to us as the in data logic as well, right? You know, 50 years of uh, being in the industry, actually the first barcode that was ever scanned in 74 was with the data logic device. So, right. you know, it speaks as well on, on how long data logic has been here in the industry and kind of the transformation in technology uh, as well. So that's pretty, pretty interesting for me. Yeah, I know that it's uh, you, one of the major reasons you were the perfect partner for this, yeah. um, you know, am amazing history there in your 50 years. So I also had the same experience as you starting in the industry. I had never noticed barcode scanners and mobile computers before, and then I couldn't unsee them. I yep. saw them everywhere. 100%. <laughs> um, so very, very cool that you also had that experience like I did. So I, I want to kind of get in you. So you started to mention the evolution and Shane, you touched on a lot of larger market issues. So we're going to dive into a little bit more of what's kind of going on in today's world when it comes to the barcode. And I do think there are folks who may overlook um, just exactly what the barcode could do. I think there's a lot of buzz about um, advanced automations and RFID, still a lot of buzz about RFID. Uh, but, you know, we've got robots, we've got this, but let's go back because I think a lot of this is enabled by what the barcode brings. And I thought maybe, Mike, I'd start with you to kind of give us a snapshot of wh where are barcodes being used today in logistics, which is kind of one of our primary, you know, areas of, of focus. Sure. Well, primarily it's for track and trace. So you need to first identify this item, bring it into your system's, you know, data source. So that's like inbound. And so normally a lot of items will have their individually um, identified. So this is a phone from something. This is, you know, a hose or whatever. So then you have to identify that with usually a tracking number. Mm -hmm. So you get into what we call um, scan and print and apply. So you scan the item label and then you go up to the cloud. It generates a tracking label and then you have automatic uh, label application. And then you have to now track that through the system. And so the database says, hey, this needs to go to point C. Mm -hmm. So as it goes through different ports, parts of the sortation system, you know, that tracking label is, is really the key. And so what it's enabled is more automation. 
mm. and more accuracy. Um, as you see, like with some of these large online companies, they're offering one day delivery, two day deliveries. That is not possible without automation and a high level of tracking and tracing. Um, For sure. So that's, that's really, I would say, you know, that's the bulk of what it is. Um, and then you can start to get into some, you know, safety issues so that w as you track it or as you identify it, oh, that's got lithium ion batteries in it. Okay, I got to divert that to this place. Oh, this has, you know, this is cold temperature. You have all these different types of caveats of where things are going. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like when you go on the, uh, you take a flight now, you can actually use the airline's app and you can actually literally see where your luggage is, right? <laughs> oh, it got on the plane. I mean, I travel a lot, short connections. The first thing I do is did my luggage make? Yeah. You know, that is not really possible mm. without, you know, the different barcode uh, identification and tracking. So I would say, you know, the, the bulk of it is track and trace, you know? Yeah, no, agreed. And, and Shane, I think, you know, with that setup, you know, it, it occurs to me that, you know, having been the first scan in 1974, that a lot of folks may say, all right, well, yeah, I'm already using barcodes for track and trace. Um, are you seeing from a barcoding ink perspective, are you seeing that in customers, like kind of finding new ways of using barcodes in their facilities or that they're, you know, using, they're packing more data into them or, you know, what, what kinds of things are customers coming to you and asking about? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't know if it's new ways to use it. It, it. I think they're extending ways to use it, right? So it's, you've got these work streams that are defined out there, right? So I showed you the back of the book earlier, like, hey, I got a barcode on my desk, nerd, right? <laughs> so I looked and the book marker that I have is actually a letter and it's got a barcode on it, right? It was from a financial institution. And so even down to a single piece of paper, you know, printing a barcode on there, that particular one's, I believe, in a 2D format, um, just allows people to keep track of everything all the time. And you're right, right? We talk about, you know, there's a lot of bleeding edge uh, technologies out there that people talk about kind of, you know, what's after the barcode, um, you know, with, with RFID or machine visioning or some of the other technologies that are out there. Truth, right? Mm -hmm. That said, the barcode is still the fastest, easiest, most consistent, most reliable, most accepted way to capture a piece of data, right? And so that's going to stick for a long time, right? So I worked that in there, stick, you got to keep the stickers, <laughs> stuff, right? Um, Give me a second there, actually. Exactly. It's late in the day here on the East Coast. <clears throat> You know, so there's a practicality, right? We all get involved with technology talks. We watch a TED talk or we'll see a, a cool new snippet on a, on a new piece of technology out there. And that's all well and good, right? But the ability to actually deploy and support and leverage that technology often is a big leap from kind of the stuff that came out of the Petri dish, right? right. And so... Those, uh, those, I forget what they're, they're called, but those little convenience store scanners that, that Mike was talking about earlier, man, they're, they're you know, a very inexpensive, very reliable, very consistent way to capture data. And everybody that's delivering a product or service into a C store or really any other sort of retail outlet, that, that, that merchandise is all pre barcoded either with a uh, a, a label that's attached to kind of a case or it's pa it's all the packaging and some of the nifty marketing people have actually converted barcodes into symbologies for their city or their particular product right so they'll bake the barcode right into the marketing um, piece in terms of identifying products out there so uh, Mike touched on the the, the e-com world let me tell you Jeff Bezos ain't Jeff Bezos without the barcode. There's no <laughs> way he's running the yeah. world's <laughs> largest logistics operation without a barcode, right? And they have, they probably have millions of barcode readers, and I'm sure they do billions of scans. It's all like Carl Sagan. 
billions and billions, billions of scans every single week, right? And there's just impossible to run that level of detailed logistics operations, whether you're a Walmart or an Amazon or really anybody that's conducting business out there today. You know, Mike said, hey, we order something today, man. It's here tomorrow. I got to tell you, you know, I've had experience. You can order something today and it's there in two hours, right? right. So it's not happening without <laughs> our ability to track things and quickly identify it. And I'll go all the way back to the labor piece of this, man. There's just not enough folks in the labor pool in the U.S. and Canada in order to be able to support all the demands that are out there. And you have to have this kind of good, sound, reliable technology that's out there. And that's not to say that it's old stodgy technology. I mean, Mike's been innovating new things in, in terms of barcode technologies out there for 36 years, right? And it's probably anything from the way scanners scan to the way that data is transported to, you know, a barcode isn't just a barcode, right? And Mike, maybe you can answer the question because I don't know the answer to it. Like in a regular old barcode, if there is such a thing, like how many symbologies are there of barcodes? It's like a million, well, it's like Babylon, right? There's a, you know, the power of Babel rather, right? You've got all these different languages out there and symbologies. Yeah, and they, and they all have their, their benefits and downfalls. Um, it's interesting to note that the very first patent for barcodes was like um, 1951. And it was based on Morse code. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you notice that uh, there's a technology or a, like a device right. limitation that then drives um, how you use things. So all they had was, you know, being able to create an electrical noise, right? So, okay, the only thing I have to use is long and short. Right. So then they're like, oh, well, let's convert that to barcoding. And so then you got lasers, right? So then you're like, okay, so, the barcode is very interesting because it, it, we keep adapting it, but it's in, at its basis level, it's encoding data into a machine language. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm, I'm amazed to see how it's evolved, right? You start with UPC, it has a check digits, you know, it's got a set number of characters, um, but then they're like, well, we wanna, we wanna do alphanumerics. So you get code 128, I-205. And then they're like, well, you know, those have problems with misreads, right? So then we get extended versions of it. And then of course you move to PDF, which is a 2D label generated by, you know, mail applications. And then you get into the 2Ds and stuff like that. So I, I really think it's interesting how it's evolved and the different symbologies have always been trying to address a market need mm -hmm. and you see them like even in logistical applications they're all over the map yeah. you know yeah, it's, well, yeah. it's worth noting that uh for those watching barcoding inc is a gs1 partner so if, if this is all kind of flying over your head or you really want an expert you can definitely reach out to us and we'll help you because more of that evolution right i mean we won't get far into this but upc going to 2D. Um, so there's, there's actually end of life for barcodes as well as products. So um, yeah. Alfred, I want to get you in here because I think there's, I mean, you're seeing a lot too. You work with a lot of different partners and, and end users um, in terms of this evolution and also in terms of addressing some of these current market conditions. Yeah. I'd love to know your take on, you know, Shane mentioned it earlier and it can't be overstated. Labor is a challenge, right? So yeah. what are you, what are you kind of seeing in your day-to-day -day, uh, work? Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely labor uh, shortages, is, it's a reality today and it will continue to be that way for for a while. So companies must adapt and um, figure how to best utilize the resources they have uh, to do their all the processes in their business. So, you know, going to the retail space and large retailers, we're seeing a trend in implementing self-checkout, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. you're now taking a traditional POS lane and making sure consumers can do their own process scan their own products, put products in the basket, just get out of the store. And now you need less people at the checkout, right? And now you can reallocate those human resources to do other type of activities such as, you know, replenishing inventory, doing inventory uh, count or receiving product, doing different things within the, that space. Um, I think in the retail area, 
uh, I'm seeing self-checkout as being like the number one trend. And then we get into new technology on how to best support companies that are implementing self-checkout so that they're efficient in the process of implementing that technology. Now, if we go to the warehouse, if we go to a, a distribution center, right? Uh, you know, how to invest in technology that's gonna, that's gonna have, you know, bring us a consequence, the company to be more efficient and productive. So you can automate process and looking at a lot of companies looking to automate, automate process. I think automation was a big word that the large mm -hmm. companies such as the Amazon, the UPS, the FedEx obviously have been implementing for a while, but now you have a lot of solutions for small businesses that um, you know can help implement certain tasks so that then you can utilize the human um, resource in a better way uh, as well. You have a high rotation of people, employees coming and leaving very fast. So, you know, looking at PDAs, mobile computers, wearable solutions, right? Um, Hands-free applications, how to give uh, an employee a tool such as a PDA device um, so they can do certain tasks and be more uh, efficient. So in that sense, I think technology, it's the number one thing they ought to be looking at. Um, you know, I would first look at what process do I have today? You know, I think you could be surprised on how many customers out there are you know, doing millions in revenue a year and they're still using pen and paper. I mean, you'd be very much surprised that a lot of them are not utilizing technology the way they can do it. So today with labor shortage, I think that's the number one thing you can look at and say, okay, how can I give technology to my employees so I can empower them to be more efficient, but also so that anytime I have new hires, the training process is as short yeah. as possible. It's very user-friendly. They know how to use these devices. We see how popular PDAs are. You know, your rugged, traditional rugged terminal, the new, the new generations are used to that traditional consumer, you know, the, the OS, Android, et cetera. So um, implementing that in the right way, it's, uh, you know, it's very key. And I think partners such as barcoding are critical in that process because we get into suggesting, you know, what type of solution is going to best fit the need of that customer. And going back a little bit in, you know, the evolution of the barcode and the technology, I think the, the good thing about what we see today is there's a solution for every need. So it doesn't, you don't need to be the largest customer with the biggest budget available in order to implement technology. You know, you have a very basic solutions that are, you know, it's gonna help you scale your business um, the, the way you need it. So how are we addressing that with technology all the way? Well, oh, super well said, Alfredo, a lot to, lot to get to in that. And I think about, um, so what you said about, you know, this is kind of an accessible way to scale your business. And I, yeah. I love that. And I think, you know, sometimes that is, you know, something that gets overlooked because a scanner can, is, you know, we're really talking about computers now. Yeah. <laughs> So right, it's it's a multi-purpose tool, um, and and now that smartphones are ubiquitous, I think people understand the power that you could start to put in your employees' hands. And yeah. so, Mike, when I think about employee experience, um, and and Alfredo touched upon a lot of things, I would be curious to know your perspective. You know, working at DataLogic and working in product, right? How much do you how how does that influence how you guys evolve? Well. Um... When we talk about, let's talk about retail type scanning. The thing that drove us was the checker experience. It was all about the checker experience. Um, one of my uh, projects I worked on early and it was, um, a, 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 we called it the Magellan scanner, but it was the first two plane scanner. And it was all about reducing the ergonomics problems, you know, carpal tunnel and twisting your hand. Um, and that, that whole philosophy, even how, you know, buttons are designed on your, on your handheld, how mm -hmm. things fit, all of that is, it really drives it. What's interesting is when you move into the TNL industry, um, we call those unattended scanning. So when we get into that, it's supposed to be installed and then never touched again. Mm. And what we're finding is from the voice of the customer. That's a, that's a really big thing for us. We spend a lot of time, you know, in these applications, in the buildings, talking to um, 
you know, customers. And the big thing now is about predictive analytics, um, how to reduce the impact of no reads um, and predictive analytics related to the device failing or the performance reducing. And uh, the cloud, the, the advantages that we have with bandwidth on the network now, the speed, mm -hmm. and that has all really advanced the art a lot. So in TNL, the user experience for us has a lot to do with easy installation, easy configuration, but then that predictive analysis and the analysis of the process so that they can optimize the read rate. I mean, that's really in TNL manufact, it all boils down to read. maximizing the read rate, you know, at Got the it. lowest cost possible. Gotcha. So that makes sense. And I know um, analytics, I'm sure Shane's ears cricked up there because uh, he has a bit of a background in that, although he didn't mention it in his bio. But I, when, when you talk to customers about data and analytics, predictive analytics, and kind of getting um, a better visibility into their technology platforms, um, what kinds of things do you mention that are important for them to understand? Because to me, sometimes on the marketing side, I have access to a lot of data and it's almost overload sometimes. And I need to hone in on where really what's going to help drive me forward. So what kind of, kind of advice do you usually give Shane in terms well, of guess, thinking about data? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, disorganized data, right. Just kind of coming at you um, is just data. Right, it, it, you really have to make decisions about what you're going to do with that data, frequency of uh, receiving that data, format of receiving that data, what's the feedback loop around that data, and then it becomes information, right? Then you can actually act on it and affect change. Um, and so, data is data, right? If it's just sitting out there and disorganized, it's it's not going to get you to where you want to be. Right, you very much have to have a disciplined approach to um, what data do I need? How frequently do I need it? What format am I gonna need it in? And what am I gonna do with it at the end? You know, nothing will drive me more crazy than when somebody asks me and said, well, I, I wanna know this, or I wanna know that. I'm like, hey man, what are you gonna do with it then? <laughs> well, I just wanna know, really, me too, right? <laughs> So it's okay. just you've got to you've got to really think about it from a, from a business standpoint of what am I going to do with this data? How is it going to affect change either in my operation or ultimately if we all do a great job? How do we impact our our customers in a way that they have a better experience? So Shane, are you saying you need to put data and logic together? <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do. You, you, you. Yeah, and there's been some good ones on this call. I know. Like, that was like really that. good. <laughs> I know. I was thinking about a, a little use case we have for a barcode that we use around here. Nobody wants me doing it because I couldn't get it right. But you know, a lot of times barcodes heal our barcode scanners. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. So if a new scanner comes in or something needs repaired and it's going back out of the field. The end user can simply just scan a barcode and it reprograms itself. Yeah. Right. So it's like this health self-healing loop process out there. So the barcode scanners are self-healing through barcodes, man. It's all good. It's all good. It is all good. Well, I I wanted to just dive into that because I know that, you know, it's it's both this collection of data and 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 it's of course though, how do we use it for driving the business forward. Mike, you touched on a couple of things on what data logic is able to provide. Alfredo, in terms of that, you know, kind of what you guys are able to present back out on your products, is there one or two things that seem to come up for customers all the time? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, and, and going back to that, you know, what do you do with data? I, I, one application comes to mind in terms of the flexibility of things we can add with our products and our technology. There's this one customer in New Jersey that uh, it's an online retailer, uh, you know, big growth with uh, e-commerce in the fashion space. And, you know, in their warehouses, they have like these workstations and, you know, bench where users go and scan each product and then pack orders 
then ship to the customers. And um, traditionally, they were using a handheld scanner. They had a monitor that showed all the information on the order, what to prepare, scanned each of the products. Obviously, you know, small sizes, big sizes, different shapes, et cetera. And uh, they were looking for ways of improving their productivity, right? In, mm-hmm. um, in, in how can the user be, uh, you know, faster in packing the, the the orders so they can get more orders out uh, each day. So they ended up buying one of our matrix uh, 320. So one of the unattended scanners that you put a uh, fix on top, they had the same monitor. And um, instead of having to use you know one hand to pick up a traditional handheld scanner and scan each of the products. Now they were just putting all of the products below the matrix 320, which is a, a 2D camera. And it keeps scanning all the time independently on where the barcode is. So mm. it, it you know, captures the data much faster, you know, increased uh, productivity. But on the other side, they figured that they can use the same information in a different way. So what they did was they connected that information to feed the CCTV cameras. So if something went wrong after the fact, let's say an order didn't arrive on time, there was a theft related to something or something went missing, they could actually go back and say, okay, order one to three was scanned at 4.35 PM on Monday. And they the, the camera was always recording what was happening that specific bench station, right? So a little bit of you know using the capabilities of the technology, not only in the traditional way of just scanning the product or taking the information, but also using that data in different ways that it ended up, you know, increasing the ROI a lot. So the customer ended up implementing that um, in their locations in Europe and now here in the in the US, right? So we're seeing a lot of that as well, you know, with PDAs, rocket terminals right now, it's very interesting, all these, you know, ISVs developing a very broad you know, options in terms of software and applications, you know, it's, uh, I think it's fair to say that nowadays, uh, you know, the hardware piece is nothing without the, the software, right? It's just a, a device. So, you know, right now for picking applications, receiving inventory management, um, reverse logistics, etc. You know, I think there's a need for every customer um, in a sense that, as, again, scaling your business, um, you have ISVs that we work with on a daily basis that barcoding works with on a daily basis. We actually have a number of uh, success stories in that sense. Yeah. You know, we can offer customers um, solutions for the issues they're seeing on, on a daily basis. Maybe they're having issues understanding where the products are. Maybe now they have different locations that they need to understand how many they have in stock, you know, which products are the high runners, how to analyze that data. So obviously, you know, every product in the logic portfolio is going to help scan that product, capture the information, and then, you know, work together in terms of partnership with the end user on how to best approach the issues they're having to solve the, the problems and obviously, you know, um, increase productivity. That's all they want. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great example. Thank you, Alfredo. And you know, you make it sound so easy, but I, 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 assume <laughs> I assume it's not. And so, Mike, I want to come back to you with maybe some just, uh, if you want to just maybe go through some concrete ways of, of improving track and trace. I know you kind of mentioned the no reads being a, a true a true challenge, but maybe just go through a couple things. You know, we know it's not just a matter of turning on a switch, but what kinds of things can people look for? Well, the first thing that the first thing that I like to do is if you look at your whole process, I mean, really from the time, let's use, let's use TNL, the time the package um, gets into either the truck or first comes into the, the building. We've seen the first step of track and trace and, and automation start with high speed sorting, right? Things are going along the belt and you need to you know, convert them, how to do all the sortation. What, what we need to, what we've seen happening, and I think what would be beneficial to users is to then move outward. And, and it starts to look at your points of your system. And just like in Alfredo's example, I always tend to look for where a human being is doing a repetitive thing, either entering, typing, scanning with a handheld or any type of that, that is a key indicator. Um, we had a very large 
um, a very large customer that is very popular in TNL. And it's, it was just up to the last year where they had users scanning the items that they came off the truck, putting them on the belt, or and then you would print out a label and they would stick the label on there. And we were able to automate that process and it reduced errors because a lot of times when you get these packages, uh, what I call item packages, mm -hmm. they have all kinds of barcodes. They'll have serial number, you know, they'll have manufacturing number, and then they'll have the UPC. And so the user sometimes scan the wrong item. Sometimes they would get behind and they knew that no one would really blame them. It would be like a no read or a fault. So they would just put them on the belt to keep up because they had quotas of time. So automating that inbound part was is really, you know, was very beneficial to them in terms of resources and errors. So really looking, moving outbound from your high-speed central sortation. Um, to look for where you're getting a lot of errors. Uh, we had an application similar to what Alfredo was talking about, but you had to put things in different zip code, what we call cubbies. Mm -hmm. And so you'd get an item, you'd scan it, and it would, it would have a readout to cubby four. And you'd have to go find cubby four. So we did similar thing with an overhead scanner where you just swept it through. And then all of a sudden a light would pop up on the cubby and you just put it there. And it was, or we used some sound, right? Mm -hmm. You know, cubby four and a light. It was sort, you know, sort to light, sort to sound. So it, it's really for the user, the customers to look for where they have repetitive kind of manual type operations. You're really reducing your inefficiencies and increasing your uh, accuracy. And it's really important more and more today, especially after, you know, we spent so much time at home for the last <laughs> two years, people are buying more unique items. Yeah. So there's a lot of items that can't go through uh, traditional sortation systems, you know, ladders or, you know, different types of tire, all kinds of different, what we call non-conveyables. Mm -hmm. And so in the past, those non-conveyables, it was all extremely manual. Um, and so the advances in technology, the way we can handle touching items, side to side items, um, reading at all kinds of different angles and even dimensioning and combining that data. So look for areas where you're doing something similar to the high-speed sortation, but there's limitations. Mm -hmm. extend, extend the automation to those things. And um, like I, another good example is pallets. So yeah, when yeah. you're you know, loading a pallet or you're sending it out, um, you have a pallet label and then you have all the items. Being able to read that pallet on a forklift as it goes into the truck, quickly verify. So we had an application where we were doing that. There was a red and green light, you know, right by the exit right. door. The pallet would go in there, all of a sudden a red light. That pallet was loaded wrong. It was going to the wrong truck. Um, so those type of things, and really, and that's on the outbound. So you have that central high speed sortation, and then you just keep moving out in your process. Yep. Um, so that that's that's really what I I tend to see where people get the benefit extending the track and trace to the full let's call it supply chain. Yeah. Oh, I love that, and I feel like did you want to comment, Shane? I didn't want to. No, you know, talk about the non conveyables We had a client that. Um, was getting bulk deliveries of it was a chemical and a feed sort of that was an agra sort of a uh, environment and same sort of thing you know if you didn't put the right chemical or feed or um, nutri nu nutrients into the right bin literally it was a hundred thousand dollars to empty it and, <laughs> and sanitize that bin right and so a simple barcode, not unlike your son, right? Where right. you're just verifying it just improves the quality of a business process out there that, you know, has a high impact to, to organizations in terms of 
uh, you know, waste and, and additional costs associated with the production. So I, I think, you know, Mike, you touched on a, part of, a lot of great areas where a company could start. Um, I wanted to give Alfredo a chance too, because I think there's looking for these opportunities where there's high repetitive tasks, inaccuracies, um, but there might just be, there might be some other options too, to get started. Alfredo, do you have other ideas there? Well, no, I think, I think it's going back to the basics, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's, you know, with a customer looking at how am I operating today? What's my current process? Where am I having issues? And then where do I need to improve, right? Maybe I'm, you know, adding more inventory and need more space. Uh, you know, I have more packages coming in and out. Uh, maybe I have a very old fleet of devices and I need to look at transitioning into the new world. You know, we saw that with mobile computers with, you know, from Windows to Android, which continues to be the the case. Um, So I would go from the, and again, it it depends on the size of the customer. If you're talking about a large retailer with a number of uh, distribution centers, or if you're talking to a large courier or, you know, nowadays all the the increase with uh, 3PLs, right? With the boom of e-commerce and all this, craziness of uh, shipments, um, you know, I think if you talk to a large customer, it's probably a much different different conversation than with a very small customer who just started their business and they need a lot of guidance in terms of, you know, how or when to implement uh, technology. I think you could get a little bit of, uh, you know, you could be afraid of, okay, maybe I, I don't want to invest money in something that I'm not sure is going to work or not. You know, our experience obviously helps them understand, okay, if, how are you counting, you know, inventory today? How are you receiving, uh, you know, your goods and, and uh, into your locations? How are you shipping products if, uh, you know, depending on what your business is? Um, so, yeah, I would say go, go back to the basics, you know, take the time to understand what the current process is. And, and then from there, we will have ideas on, on how to suggest, you know, many times we, we go to customer sites and, and you have a very good visual on things that are mm-hmm. doing, you know, are happening today. You know, they have a number of forklifts and maybe they need a, a vehicle mount computer that's gonna help the user, um, you know, instead of having to go back to a workstation to understand what the next, next uh, task is gonna be, you know, hey, we have a vehicle mount computer, you know, if uh, they, they're using a handheld device and we realize that they can now get into the wearable solutions that we see very popularly in the, in the market today, you know, their users are gonna have hands-free, maybe they have a standard range mobile computer, but then they, they're using something to go up there and scan, you know, close uh, on the high racks. Hey, we have a long range device that's going to help you scan much faster, um, you know, the upper yeah. racks or a distance. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there. It's just a matter of uh, taking the time to understand, you know, how to, how to help the customers. And, and I think that's, you know, uh, what you guys do on a daily basis right at the end that's our responsibility and that's what we do and helping customers uh, understand how to better utilize uh, our technology yeah Yeah. i like to keep it simple i think you know if you're an it you know someone in it watching this you know make sure you have that great line to operations Um, so you know try not to make those assumptions there and if you're an ops you know make it your your champion Um, i think more than ever these two functions have to work super closely together and I'd also say, you know, something that we're finding at barcoding, I mean, we always say process people, technology, PPT, um, but at the, on the people side, you know, simply asking users where they are stuck, right? Where they are really frustrated um, and really in really getting that firsthand feedback, I think can be very valuable. It's something that barcoding as a partner can certainly bring to the table and help you kind of vet out that feedback. Um, but we're, we, uh, so, you know, I think that we've covered so much ground, but I'm, I want more because I'm hungry for more. And I think <laughs> the future, the future is b- very bright. Um, but one thing that people have said since I started in this business from 12 years ago is, is it barcodes or RFID? What's the difference? Why, why do we have to talk sure. about this? Um, but in like 30 seconds, Mike, give us the rundown barcodes, RFID. Why such a battle? <laughs> well, you know, I think the challenge with uh, the inherent problem with barcodes is you have to, it has a specific location, right? So that's why we have five-sided reading. That's why uh, in retail, you try and develop 360 scanning. 
So the, the promise of having a package that will sort of identify itself regardless of orientation and having to identify a site is very attractive. And I'm, I'm of the mind, RFID is a great technology, but I think it's going, it, I know it will, it's going to coexist with barcodes for very particular applications. And it's primarily because some of the limitations of RFID and the cost, right? So when you're printing a box to put something in, you you have to put labels and names. You have to print, print the barcode. Your barcode is free, right? right? And we we specifically know if you can see it and we can read it. We have many years of history in, in TNL of 99.5 percent read rate. Now. If I'm getting some large TVs and I want to put a RFID tag, maybe reusable because it's so expensive and I have to track that within my warehouse, that's going to be a great application, right? Or you're going to put it on train cars going through the, you know, where they go into the train station to check them. So I think we have to understand that there's going to be a lot of technologies that coexist, right? So we're going yes. to get into OCR. Um, op uh, optical character recognition, where we're using vision to read the characters. Yeah, so that's very powerful too. All of these things will coexist based on the requirements of the application. I love that. Like this coexisting barcodes, yeah. RFID, all the new. And we all get along, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mike. We could use, Mike. We could use it in Washington. You just went so across positive. the aisle. You <laughs> yeah. developed yeah. a compromise. I like yeah. it. Well, uh, to me, so my brain goes, you know, being on the barcoding side, I think, okay, now we have a very robust ecosystem of technologies all happily coexisting. However, and Shane, this one's going to be for you. However, somebody cool. needs to make sense of this all, right? I mean, they're all going to have different software needs. They're all going to have, um, you know, different repair needs and support needs. And somehow we've got to make sense of this this very multi-layered technology platform. So from, you know, you wanna give us barcoding's perspective on that? Yeah, so barcoding's perspective of it is, is there's, there's a glut of data out there and information and talking heads and everybody trying to promote their new technologies. But, you know, always go back to the, to the, the, the basics, always go back to the simple piece, right? If you follow the process of, Look at the business processes, look at the people involved with those processes. Then you can talk about the technology. Then you can talk about how am I going to implement this? What are my expected impacts associated with deploying this? What's the care and feeding of those devices or that platform moving forward? How do I make sure that it's secure? Right? All of a sudden, I've been, I've, I, you know, I, I've got clients out there with 20 or 30, 40,000 endpoints. All of a sudden, they're sitting out there, right? How do I make that sure it's secure? How do I make sure that um, as we're using the Google platform for most of the OSs out there, how do I make sure that the patches are one, appropriate so they don't conflict with all the other software that's sitting out there? You know, is it going to be effective? Is it timely in terms of doing those patching? Um, so it's truly a whole life cycle framework that's associated with the deployment of this type of technology. You know, Mike, I often get, you know, I, one of the craziest questions I get asked or people will say to me if I'm at an event, they say, hey, I'm looking for an RFID system. <laughs> I'm like, really? Why is that? Let's talk about your business for a minute, right? Right. So RFID, there's certain places where it's really highly effective, right? The right. trick with the RFID uh, solution sets out there that every one of them has to be so engineered, right? Because I can't wait, I can't rely on somebody to do this with that RFID reader, right? You can, there's handheld RFID readers, and then you're almost back into the realm of a, right. <laughs> of, of a mobile barcode scanner. Right. Um, and so it, it's really, it, it, again, it's repetitive, but we just go back to, let's look at what's going on out there. I always tell people, look for the clipboards. Man, if you're seeing clipboards out there, there's an opportunity for improvement of data capture. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, am I recording it? 
Is it legible? Then I've got to go key it. Did I key it correctly? How long did it take to go from the, the, the number two pencil to the paper, to a keyboard, into the system? There's all those things out there. So um, peaceful coexistence, absolutely. I think there'll be lots of those technology. You know, the imaging technologies that, that Data Logic is doing these days, that stuff is very fascinating, right? That's the stuff that I think is, you know, and we sell a lot of RFID stuff too, right? But I think that's the rocket ship. I think that's the piece that, um, and, and Mike talked about it, right? So if I start putting bar or uh, RFID tags, even inexpensive RFID tags, you know, a five cent tag, which there's, you know, it's pretty limited in terms of the capabilities versus free. And they say, well, it's only five cents. Yeah, but I'm doing 5 million of them a year, yeah. <laughs> right. right? So all of a sudden the math starts getting challenging. Um, definitely places for RFID out there imaging, more optical reading, whether it's a barcode or an imaging type of thing. I think that's really the, the place that is going to continue to lead the overall marketplace. Plus, you know, you don't just put this stuff in and it works forever. Right. So you don't put some fancy schmancy stuff in. Somebody's got to support the doggone thing over time. <laughs> Right, so you know, all these considerations, because it's not a singular investment event; it's a long-term investment. That's right. event. and I it's going to go ahead, Mike. I was, I was just going to add the one of our one of our really most popular airport solutions has lasers, uh, vision system, or you know, using a camera to read the barcodes. We send the images to OCR or some misreads or some calculations and we have RFID right. and that solution, you know, the customers, all they care about is they want an output of the tracking. And so those kind of systems, we're seeing it more and more, you know, where we call it hybrid. So it's a hybrid tracking system. Yeah. And that's, I mean, Alfredo, when you say like, that's one of the key reasons that partnerships are so important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, I think partnerships are, are are key uh, in order to make uh, any project successful. Um, we we can't take it all as data logic because barcoding will definitely offer a lot of uh, services and solutions that we don't offer. You know, we dedicate our, our time and uh, resources to manufacture the, our technology and to develop a new technology. And, um, you know, when, when we go uh, to an account and uh, offer a solution to a customer, barcode is going to add a lot of value with all the services and all the, you know, to Shane's point, it's, it's a long process, a long cycle. And it, it takes time and money to support the, you know, the post uh, sale, uh, you know, maintenance, uh, pushing updates, uh, upgrading constantly, and especially nowadays with technology moving, uh, moving so fast. So yeah, definitely partnership. It's a, a key, key component to this. Yeah, it I mean, I think village. <laughs> it takes a village. Well, and, and so we, we do run across, you know, organizations that feel like they want to keep a lot in house. Um, but I would contend that to, in today's environment, a, a healthy ecosystem of key yeah. partnerships, right? We don't need a zillion of them, but we need key yeah. partners who can really help us with these, these peacefully coexisting technologies, right? So, I mean, I, I can't imagine trying to tackle all of that on my own. Yeah. So um, our advice to you, audience, don't go it alone. We are here to help. <laughs> 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 well, I, I want to end kind of on a fun note. Um, I want to put on pro, pro uh, well, forecasting hats. Um, and let's think about our favorite future thing that we, that we see in the kind of the near future um, that's coming up. So Mike, you know, kind of thinking ahead, what's going to, what do you think is going to have the most impact um, coming up? And, and if you want to stick with TNL, that's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I really, um, I really think that the you know art, artificial intelligence deep learning um i really think that's really exciting for all kinds of different applications i really see where you you have a track and trace let's say a high speed sortation system and it, it's supposed to read at 99.5 or 99.8 and it starts to start to reduce that reduction as you say if you multiply it by the number of packages um 
that has a huge impact and knowing ahead of time saying, hey, that system is about to go down. Mm -hmm. And then for us to be able to say why. Um, similarly, we do that with, now we have a whole system of what we call uh, anal barcode analytics. So when you get a no read, because we have a vision system, we can try to process that and say, hey, you know why you got this as a no read? No, no quiet zone. There was a wrinkle, um, whatever it is that actually helps them improve the process. So I'm really excited to see how, you know, as, as processing power improves and, and network speed and bandwidth, how do we use the data that we capture to predict and proactively improve mm -hmm. the efficiency? That, I, I really am excited about that part. I love it. Well, thank you, DataLogic. We really appreciate your time here today. I mean, we could, I think that we three of us can just keep talking and talking for us. Um, but I, I do think that we'll save some for another time, but thank you so much for sponsoring this awesome huddle. And you, if you have ever watched uh, one of our other huddles, you know I like to end on a fun and spontaneous note. So um, I'm gonna ask each of you the very basic question of what was the last barcode you scanned? most recent barcode you scanned that you can share with the world here on YouTube. So Alfredo, what was the last barcode you scanned? Ah, uh, a QR code um, last night going to a restaurant. Shane, how about you? Alfredo, what'd you have? Um, sushi. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. From fish to a barcode. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I scanned a kind bar this afternoon as I went across to the, uh, the drugstore across the way to uh, supplement my lunch. Excellent, excellent little snack time. All right, and Mike, how about you? Well, I was linking up my Zoom system to my <laughs> TV and I had to scan a barcode to create a link there between the two go. devices. <laughs> You're the king of the world out there, Mike. <laughs> my Hello, brought to you by a barcode. It's awesome. I love it. Oh, I do too. Well, again, very, very thankful, DataLogic, for joining us here today. Um, they are the global leader in, in technology for the AIDC space. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being a barcoding Inc. partner and for helping us sponsor National Barcode Day. Mark your calendars, June 26th. Every year we are celebrating that, that little wonderful invention called barcode and the future is very bright. Um, and if you loved what you heard and you want to know more, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit us up on all our socials, whatever the kids say, all those things, do them. Um, we're here for you. And we'd love to hear from you if you have a problem, if you have a challenge, if you want to extend track and trace in your, in your business and you want to get more efficient, accurate, and more importantly, you want to provide better user experience, better customer experience, and just all around geek out about barcodes, we're your people. So uh, thank you guys, and I can't wait to talk to you again later. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Thank you.